Welcome to the video lecture series in social media. For video lecture number one, Introduction to Social Media, we will talk about the basics and different types of social media, the advantages and disadvantages of each type of social media, and give you examples of each of the different types. When we talk about the different types of social media, one big mistake that people make is that they don't truly understand the depth and width that social media entails. And so there's a lot of different types of items that fall under social media that are well beyond what people think of when they hear social media. When you hear the term social media, a lot of people reference sites like Facebook and LinkedIn, when actually social media as a whole carries a wider uh, gamut of activities and programs. Items we're going to talk about are blogging, what's called microblogging, social networking, social bookmarking, multimedia, uh, reviews and opinion sites, and wikis. And we're going to break each one of those down more specifically. When we talk about blogging, when we look at blogging, we're looking at it as being a informational conversation. Um, it's become kind of like your online medium that deals with writing and publishing content. Uh, to be successful, a blog's got to be done on a regular basis. Um, anyone could get a, a blog site. There's a lot of free sites that are, that are out there and available. Uh, you want to look at sites like Blogger, TypePad, uh, WordPress, or all different types of, of blog sites you can go to. Um, who's going to use the blogging. If you want to try to identify yourself as an industry expert, that's when you would use blogging as, as part of, of that uh, criteria. Um, but giving specific pieces of knowledge, not necessarily about your specific company, say, hey, my company is great. What you're trying to do is identify that you're a content expert in a specific target market and based on that, that that could potentially lead to uh, additional business. Um, specific strengths that, that are going to be found uh, for blogging, it's simple to start. You can get a blog site started within 10 minutes. Uh, it's a convenient way for you to uh, provide useful resources to your target audience and the potential to um, share very detailed information. Uh, more so than you could through a social networking site like Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, it really gives you more detail for you to look at. Uh, weaknesses. The time commitment weakness comes into play of, of being able to set up and maintain. You're going to want to make sure that you're putting in regular posts, giving people a reason for you to come back. Uh, if you're only doing a post once every six months or all of a sudden you do it every week, every week, every week, and then it takes you three months, and then it's two months and four months for you to do posts, you're eliminating the reason for people to come to your blog. And so you want to make sure that you're posting on a somewhat regular basis. Uh, some of your opportunities that are going to fall under blogging is this idea that you're able to bring in a uh, loyal readership. And so you want to develop people that are going to follow your blog. You want people to subscribe to your blog. And there's other ways uh, for you to generate income for your blog. You can sell advertisements on your blog. Uh, but it also can be a link for you to bring in additional business to your company. Uh, a lot of consultants use blogs as an opportunity for them to communicate with people that they know what they're talking about. And if people agree with what they have to say, they've developed trusts within those uh, people reading the blogs and that trust may lead into a potential uh, customer. We talk about micro microblogging. The difference between blogging and micro blogging is usually with micro blogging there's going to be a word limit on what you can say. And so um, we look at different types of microblog sites. One of the more popular ones right now is Twitter. And so you have a, a limit of characters you can use in a message you send out. Another one 
is called, something called front, uh, front feed. When we look at microblogging, this really best suits you um, when you want an immediate interaction with your uh, consumer base. Uh, some of your strengths, it's quick and easy to post. You can start to get people to follow your posts, which can allow you to uh, grow your exposure to a large group of, of users in, in, quite, in, in a very short span. Uh, it's easy to update from your mobile devices uh, where you can uh, just, um, if you have the app for your smartphone, you can just click in the message and it uploads uh, almost in, and basically instantaneously. Uh, some weaknesses that you're going to run into, again, if you want people to follow you just like in a blog, the challenges you're going to run into is this, this idea of how often or how frequently am I posting. Um, and the other weakness is it's really not meant for in-depth uh, information, and so it's got it's quick, you know, quick few words. Um, and so, if you really want to try and get an in-depth message out, microblogging may not be the tool for you. Um, some of your opportunities you can build in loyal followers. Uh, you can drive traffic uh, to specific blog posts, uh, or you can. Um, drive traffic to your website and so you might use blogging and microblogging together where you might put something on microblog check out my recent blog on cheeseburgers at edsblog.com or whatever it might be and so the other thing will allow you to do is maybe cover live cover live events give you quick uh, updates of what's going on um, You'll see that at sporting events, people will put information up. Oh, I'm in section C. Uh, they just scored a touchdown, and so you can update um, specific live events. Uh, social networking. This is the uh, the section of social media that people most frequently are going to think of when they hear the term social media. And social networking is a community-based network and so um, it's a way to engage and interact uh, with a specific community online and you could be usually there's a fan page or a profile page for you to kind of set up uh, Facebook MySpace these are these social networking sites that most people are familiar with uh, when it first when social networking first started a lot of people were on MySpace that is starting to phase out. Uh, MySpace is really uh, now really been geared towards people in the music industry. And Facebook is really taking over as kind of that point of, of contact um, for social networking sites. If you want to, to build a base um, and potential customers, um, Social networking is, is good. It's kind of an opportunity for them all to kind of gain access to you in one specific location. Um, it's an effective of medium for conversation with a target audience. And another strength is that um, you, can, you can tap into specific um, markets of that, of your base. Some of the weaknesses and some of the challenges businesses run into with social networking. Uh, everyone says, hey, you have to have a Facebook page. But I still think some companies have a hard time truly understanding what they need to do or why they need to um, or how to communicate. Um, the idea is the majority of these people are there to socialize. They're not necessarily there to conduct business. And so some businesses have over done that part and where they have turned people off by promoting their business too much uh, when that's not necessarily why people are on uh, Facebook. Uh, there was, uh, even from my own personal networks I've had to defriend uh, some people because they're putting more stuff about business stuff and I just to me that I reacted to that as spam and I really didn't um, want that uh, specific information uh, and so one of the nice opportunities it gets to build a brand your own brand um, and it lets you spread your brand to um, your community's network of influence uh, 
social bookmarking. Uh, these are sites where it allows you a uh, central location for posting links and useful resources uh, that can be uh, seen and shared by other people in the um, by other users. Um, some of the uh, sites that uh, we'll talk about dig, stubble upon, and delicious are some of these sites. And so if we look at dig, This is basically uh, a site that allows you to look at what are the top stories. So it's culling through RSS feeds all the stories um, that are on this specific that are are rotating out there. What are the things for you to to look at? And so you can submit a link to a, a specific story. You can identify which ones are popular, which ones aren't popular. Um, the other site that we talked about is called Stumble Upon. And so this one is talking about. Um, just different websites that you can link in, you can create your own account, and then you can it almost bookmarks or identifies the sites that you would be looking at. And so um, Delicious is another site that um, does kind of the same stuff. So if you find things in specific pages that you're interested in, you set up your own account, and it kind of bookmarks or identifies or collects all of that information for you. And so when we talk about social bookmarking, uh, it's best suited when you want to share your useful resources relating to your industry with a target audience. Um, it allows a quick spread of your individual content, uh, drives external traffic to uh, your websites, and bookmarks are stored remotely so they can be accessed um, from anywhere. Uh, weaknesses, if you're sharing and posting links of your own material, it can almost seem as a little bit of uh, self-promotion you are going to fall under the same competition with the other people that are submitting content uh, to those links. Um, some of your opportunities allows you to share and spread uh, some useful content. Also allows you to look and search what is your competition doing, monitor what your competition is putting out there, and it can create and generate um, buzz about your specific brand. When we talk about Multi multimedia, um, you're viewing some multimedia content right now. Sharing um, video, images, uh, presentations online, um, sites that you can do images with. Flickr is uh, generally an image site. Uh, SlideShare is a site that allows you to uh, share PowerPoints. And uh, YouTube is a primarily a video site. Um, for me to make the content that I supply uh, to you um, through the video lecture series is I'm actually using um, an add-on feature with PowerPoint, an additional program called Camtasia that allows me to record all the record audio and add video along with the uh, multimedia uh, or the slideshow. And so it allows me to uh, record what is on the screen of my computer and adding additional pieces of it. And so that's how these videos are developed. Um, if you need to create how-to videos 
uh, rich content images such as presentation allows you to share that information um, a lot of companies if you see videos on any website you're going to see majority of these videos are going to be um, hosted through what through YouTube one of the reasons is I can host all these videos on YouTube where I'm not using my own personal uh, server storage and so it uses a lot less um, my own resources to host my page because I don't need to store the videos on my own web server. Um, the strength is obviously I can reach a little bit more senses with a video clip than I can with just text from a blog. Um, there's even, um, and we can even talk some of this multimedia piece, we can call it video blogging. Um, it's more likely to be shared, uh, video content. And it's a, a, comp, a compact way to communicate a large amount of information. Uh, we look at different opportunities. Uh, and it, it, it can be quite labor intensive. It takes me quite, quite a while time to create all the backdrop um, in regards of creating the content, doing the video, and then package in a way where it can be seen online uh, that is somewhat labor, uh, labor intensive. Um, there is some technical experience necessary uh, to produce videos, uh, but you can do your basic videos off of a uh, webcam off of a laptop if you're not going to do any editing and uh, post just a straight video that way. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of salesmanship behind it, and you're going to want to add some additional features. Um, if you look at the videos when I first started doing them and where it's starting to progress, as my technical knowledge has increased, so has some of the things that I'm doing with the videos. Um, if the video is not done properly, it can also have a reverse effect where based on what you say or how you say it, people may think that you are not the content expert that you are trying or claiming to be. Um, initial opportunities, obviously, we want to reach consumers who prefer visual media over text. Um, a lot of companies are doing online sales presentations or demonstrations. It's a lot easier for us to just say, hey, go to this website, go to YouTube and see the video versus producing a DVD and mailing that DVD out. Um, so it's definitely more cost effective. Um, you're going to engage more effectively as a result of a richer media. You're getting more senses with the sound sense coming over it. And um, anyone can view your uh, video from different locations. And so you may educate people over a larger geographic barrier than you did before and you know obviously that's one of the advantages of uh, the technology and when we talk about reviews and opinions pages we've all been in these sites uh, these are ways for customers to share opinions and reviews of different products and services and so you may have um, e-opinions e-how those are are two sites that that's all that site does is you go and you review specific uh, topics. There's other ones that are spe sent for specific industries. Uh, and now even retailers have tied that in where they will have review pages on each individual uh, product that they sell. And so it's best suited for someone who, for a company that's going to have high volume products, uh, high value products or services and have traditionally relied on referrals uh, for new business. And so you can establish yourself as an expert knowledge by providing uh, some critiques or reviews on different sites. Um, you can reach users in the research phase of the buying process. Um, one of the weaknesses is if people start to negatively review your product, um, there's going to be obviously a certain amount of damage that is done with that. Um, sometimes what is said about your brand can be out of your individual control. Uh, some of the opportunities that you have is to establish credibility for your brand and extend your brand um, your brand's reach by getting people who aren't currently your customers and be the customers of a competitor's product 
um, but they're going to look at the competition. And so if you have positive reviews, then that could be something that could say, could lead them to your product versus your competitor. Uh, Wikis is a uh, such a repository designed to be edited by a group rather than a person. Uh, one of the more popular examples of this is Wikipedia, which is sometimes maligned uh, by the media uh, by not being 100% um, correct the, the information on there. Uh, and sometimes people don't understand what Wikipedia is. Uh, Wikipedia relies on contributing authors to add to the post of each of uh, their content items and with the idea that as people respond that the correct information will be put on there. And so there's been questions about the validity of Wikipedia and what Wikipedia is there for. And so um, this isn't necessarily the Wikipedia thing, but you can create a wiki for your product. And so if you want consumer input on product development or consumer input on design features, uh, it allows you to have people kind of create an environment and a community to do that. It's an easy way for consumers to get heard through a process. Um, and by you contributing to a wiki, you can kind of pitch yourself as being that content expert. Uh, some of the weakness, weaknesses, um, there may be some programming information, uh, syntaxes that you need to do, know to edit a wiki. Um, since it is an open channel, if people are giving you negative feedback, it's hard really to limit that. Uh, and you kind of give up ownership of it because you're letting everyone kind of contribute to it. And so you lose the ownership of that piece. Um, it may save time in your internal processes. We've done, sometimes companies will do wiki-based strategic planning where they will create one main document and have each individual department kind of contribute to it. Um, it can create good effect of branding between your uh, customers and your business. 